Well, greetings. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule today to be with us. When I was asked to give this talk today, I began thinking about uh, what I was going to talk about. And the word get, kept coming up to my mind was peace. Now, most of us in this world, most normal people, want to just live in peace, not being hassled with everything that's going on. But I know that that's kind of hard to do in this life that we've got today with all the troubles that are going on around our nation and then all around the world. We have no control over the things that affect us. Much of, the, much of these troubles are caused by ungodly men attempting to control the rest of the world. And when I read in uh, Romans 8, 6, it states, the mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind, of con mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. And then I thought of a story I heard years ago. It was a story about a very wealthy man. He had a collection of paintings. This was his hobby. He had paintings of some of the old masters, Picasso and some of those. But the, it was one painting that he wanted that he didn't have. And he put out a challenge to the artists all across the nation to enter a competition in painting a picture of peace. Now the word went out and over the next few months, these uh, artists from across the country began to send in their paintings. At the end of that time, there was gonna be a presentation made in a auditorium with all the artists and people of interest could come to and watch it. But at this meeting, and in the Congress, at this, uh, in this big auditorium, they come in, there were three easels up on a platform, each one covering a picture. And as he removed the picture from the first one, this was a third place finisher. There were a lot of oohs and ahs as the people saw the picture. It was a painting of a beautiful mountain valley. covered in beautiful green grass, trees, the poppies blooming, high mountain, snow-capped mountains in the background, just a perfect picture of peace, very well painted. Then he removed the covering from the second painting. And again, there were the oohs and the ahs, this was a painting of a little baby lamb curled up sleeping in the grass with a mother standing over it. Just a perfect picture of peace. Nothing's as cute as a little baby lamb. But then he took the veil off of the third painting, the first place painting. And this time as the parel was removed, there was a loud gasp as the people saw it. Because it wasn't a painting of peace, it was a painting of a violent storm. Black clouds overhead, raining, lightning flashing, the heavy waves crashing against a rocky shoreline. There wasn't anything peaceful about it until you looked up high up on the rock and the side of this, this shoreline. And there you can see a little small hole in the, at the big granite rock. And you look inside that, and there was a picture, there was a little bird sitting in the nest, sleeping. Totally oblivious to what's going on around about him. Totally at peace. And this can be like, this is a good example of what Christianity is like. 
We live in a storm-filled world, but yet we can have the peace in our hearts. It only comes from knowing Jesus Christ as our, as our Savior. As in Psalms 4, 8, it says, I will lay down and, and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Now, the Lord doesn't take us out of this sinful world filled with all the trouble, but he can give us peace in knowing that we will spend eternity in heaven with him. And then we can be a, and that can be accomplished by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. God's word tells us that is it, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. And that judgment is going to be whether you spend eternity in heaven with the Lord himself, or when you spend it in the pits of hell. And all of us are going to die sometime, but the trouble is we just don't know when. So we have to be prepared. As many people die at young age, and as we see with the viruses that are going on these days, people of all ages are passing away. This is not something they were looking forward to, but it happens. And it's up to us to be prepared when that does happen. So if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, there's no better time to do it than right now. You know, God loves you. He said so in John 3.16. I'll be the most quoted verse in the entire Bible. It said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And in Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. In Romans 10, 13, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, he will be saved. And in Revelation 3, 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. Now, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you'd like to give your, your heart to him today, right now, there's no better, no better time than right now. Just repeat this prayer after me. Bow your head and humble, humble us to God and repeat this pray, prayer. Confessing to God that I am a sinner and believing that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sin on the cross and was raised for my justification. I do now receive and confess him as my personal savior. I want to stop and I'll stop for a moment and just pray for you. Lord, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for those who may have ex expressed the desire to turn their hearts and lives over to you. I pray, dear God, that you would work miracles in their lives. Let them know, God, that you love them and you care for them. Be with him now and lead him in your paths that you would have him to follow the rest of their lives. And if you have sincerely said this prayer, your name is now written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. One last scripture. 1 Corinthians 5.23 says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will give it unto you and he will do it to you. Now, if you have accepted Jesus today, I encourage you now to spend time each day reading your Bible and praying surrendering more and more of your life to him. And if you don't have a Bible, if you just absolutely do not have one, can't get one, 
you live here in Stevens County, if you will contact us, the Assembly of God Church here in Colville, give us your name, address, and phone number. We will contact you and we'll get a Bible to you. And in fact, I'll deliver it to your house if I have to. Yeah. And God bless you.